One of the key questions I get from my students as well as people watching here on YouTube is how to create effective case studies in order for you to get additional work in the future. So in today's video, we are going to talk just about that. I'm going to show you how to create effective case studies and give you a free template to do just so in Adobe XD. So let's get started. Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and before we get started make sure to check out the links down in the description below. There is going to be a link for you to download this template which I'm going to show you as well as some links to mentions which I'm going to mention in today's video. So without any further ado, download the template, fire up the Adobe XD and let's get started. So here is the template and here is how it looks like and this is just a starting template so just keep that in mind. This is there to show you what you can do using this template and in no way which I want to limit you into what you can do in using this template. So let's get started from the start. Here in the assets panel on the left what you can do is click on this libraries uh, icon to open up all of these document assets right here and here you have just a few colors which I prepared for this template and down below you have character styles which is poppins and I believe this is a free Google font and Adobe font so no matter if you're using Google fonts or Adobe fonts it's going to be free to get started and of course at any point you can change it to reflect your client's design which I highly recommend so if your client is using any sort of custom font and you have that font installed make sure that that font is going to reflect the presentation which you're actually going to show in your case study. Then below that we have some components and I'm going to talk uh, about them in just a second but before we move on any further let me show you what this all is. So right here we have welcome to US case study and I just included this text um, in order for you to help you along and to help you get started if you get stuck at any point. So make sure to give it a read if you can. It's going to help you a lot if you're struggling and if you're just getting started. Then here we have a starting template and this is just a template which I created and I'm going to get to it in just a second. Then next to that I have a presentation for my Adobe Live session which I have uh, recently with Adobe Live on their Behance uh, live stream and on the YouTube page and I'm going to link down below in this in the description of this video if you want to check out this full live stream which was four hours long where we created this app so everything is going to be a lot more clear if you want to watch that but this is there because I created this whole presentation using the template which I'm going to give you so it's going to be super um, beneficial for you just to see and to understand what it can be done by using this UX case study template. And finally here you have the artboard which is called UX case study and this is there to help you drag and drop these components inside. But before we get to them I want to show you this. So if you click and click this play icon right here it's going to open this text up and I included some links right here so you can check out my inception design system which is basically the backbone idea behind this template and how to structure and prepare this template for you guys to use. So you can just go ahead and click right here and it's going to open up that. If you don't know what design systems are and if you want to learn a bit more about it and about Inception in particular, make sure to check out this free YouTube course right here which is located on my channel so to get familiar with what Inception design system is and how to use it. And if we scroll a further down you can read this awesome article on XD Ideas by Justin Morales where he walks you through exactly the entire case study structure and how a good case study should look like. And I simply took a few points from that article, I narrowed them down a bit and I included some of my own points to show you the ideal structure but in no way this is obligatory structure make sure to include only the elements which are actually in your project so don't be uh, afraid if you don't have for example roles call point constraints or results or whatever make sure to include only thing which you have in your case study. So don't try to invent things just to make your case study bigger. Make sure to include things which were actually in your project. So here we have 
introduction and we have project cover which should be ideally at the top i'm going to show you that in just a second then we have introduction and introduction can cover all of these different things then we have the process and the process you took in order for you to design this project then we have the research and various different researches that you can do on any given project so once again don't be scared if you didn't do any of these make sure to include the ones that you did in your case study finally we have design iterations and inside of these iterations it's the same story so if you didn't do task flows for example don't include them if you didn't do let's say wire flows or card sorts don't include them make sure to include only the things that you actually did and finally at the end you should include results and next steps and the top tip right here is to to a link to results and next steps presentation at the top so if uh, people who are watching your presentations uh, don't want to see the entire process they just want to see the finished result make sure to link it at the top and how to do that if you don't have a website of your own then you can simply create a clickable prototype just like this one and you can share this as your case study you can get started there and then you can share this on your Behance page for example and make sure that your clients can find it make sure they they can click it and that's why we have this hyperlink option so once again if i click right here for example it's going to take me to my inception design system and i already have it open up right here so once again if you're interested give it a look make sure to check it out and make sure to see what it can do and as i mentioned this is a free course on youtube you can check it out just to learn more about it and to see what it can do all of it was linked in this original XD document and I just included a hyperlink inside. And finally, this is that awesome, awesome uh, article by Justin Morales. So make sure to check it out. It's on XD ideas and it's linked in this document using the hyperlink function. So make sure just to click right here and it's going to open it up in your default browser. You can see it happening right here in real time. So make sure to check it out to learn more. For the template itself, as I mentioned, the template has a artboard which is 1920 in width, basically the default artboard and one of the default artboards in Adobe XD. Here I have the starting example and all of these were components which were taken from here. So what you have right here inside of the components section, you have some of these basic icons. So this is the icon for the image. And if I zoom a little bit closer, you can see this image icon right here signalizing where you should put in your image. And here we have all of these social media icons for the most popular social media and you can simply drag these inside like so and if you decide to switch them at any point so instead of twitter let's say i want to include instagram simply drag and drop on top let go and it's going to replace that with this new icon and let me get rid of that and go back to these templates so what we have right here if you remember from here that i mentioned project cover introduction and all of these different sections so here we have project cover, which is this project cover right here. And I simply filled it in with some basic, basic information, but make sure to include your own information inside, of course. So here we have cover templates, which is this template that you see right here. So if you decide to switch it up at any point, you can simply select, drag and drop this one, for example, and then simply fill in your information right here at the bottom. Let me go back and you can switch around and play around with all of these other ones. Then we have project overview, which basically tells you what the project was about. And you can go really in depth right here if you want to. Then I included a simple image right here, which is this image right here. So you have these cover images which are for these cover templates and you can simply switch let's say i want to have text on the right like it is right here but i want to have a bit smaller image so let's go with cover image three columns wide and let me drag it right here but let me first select this image inside click drag and it's going to replace that image and you can of course scale it at any point like so make sure to adjust it it's three columns wide so it's this one and then you can move around the text position it wherever you want and adjust it however it suits you and your project and you can see it happening right here so all of these are basically components 
and I did this for all of them. This image, as I mentioned, is not from cover images, but from images right here. So that's why I created this folder for cover uh, project cover, because that's all linked for the project cover itself. All of these images down here are linked to throughout your document and you can put them wherever you want. You can do the same from uh, project cover images if you want to, but basically they are designed for project cover. And these images do the same story. So because all of these are components, let's say this is 12 columns wide as you can see I can simply drag and drop any column by image and I can scale it up or down or I can even go in width and create it to be 12 columns or 4 columns do with it whatever you want and then finally if you decide for whatever reason that you don't want these uh, icons inside and you want something different so let me quickly find an image uh, to drag and drop inside this is the image for the tutorial I'm preparing for next week on the channel I'm going to drag and drop this image inside and you can see that this icon is here so what you can do is select this icon and just lower down the opacity like so or what you can also do is here you have the default state and you have this pencil icon where it says edit main component. When you click that, it's going to open up the new instance right here, which is the main instance. And you can simply double click inside and hide it. There you go. And then you can simply get rid of it right here. And now, because that was 12 columns wide, if I decide to, let's say, I don't know, switch this one, you can see that it disappeared. So you can do that if you want to. Let me go back a little bit, there you go. And I did this just to show you where you can place your images. Then below that we have product research and I included some simple product research right here. Of course, depending on your project, you are going to include something different. Then I included these three images using stacks feature of XD and you can see it right here. So if I decide to change this to let's say 40, you can see it updated in real time. Then below that design process, just some figures from the project, paper wireframes, user flows, wireframe, high fidelity design and finally finished design. And here you can see you can extend this image placeholder to be whatever you want. And then you can do the same with all of these images. You can adjust them however you want. You can switch them around. So for example, I can get rid of this one, make sure that this is four columns wide, make sure this is, I don't know, eight columns wide. So you can really play around with the layout. You can add additional images. So it all depends and it's all up to you. Here I included just the final sort of uh, ending uh, pass for this template and here you can see I appreciate your time have a project in mind please reach out via email and then here obviously you're going to include your own email if you decide to use this template so we can discuss it further and here I have social media icons you can replace them with your own you can link to them and here you can select this Twitter icon you can link it in the prototype if you don't have your own website and then it can take your visitors to the actual Twitter page to the actual Instagram page of yours and it's going to have this effect of a real website and finally I included this example just to show you what it can be created. Let me get rid of this one. And this is the example, as I mentioned, from the Adobe Live session, which I did. I'm going to link to both of them in the description below if you want to check them out. And everything that you see right here is created using this method. So simply what you can do is use this UX case study. And here I have the project cover. As you can see, image is on the right hand side. So let's locate something like that project cover. So let's use something like this. There we go. And you can further adjust this if you want to. You can move this image as I explained. You can move the text up a little bit. Then let me extend my artboard a bit. So select your artboard, click right here to extend it. Here we have image on the right. Here we have image on the left. Here we have image on the right. So let's do that. Let's find those. Let me close this. Let me close images. Let me open up the content. And here I have image on the right. Let me place it in the center. So it's this same layout. Here we have image on the left. Let me place it and hit control D, duplicate it, position it. And there you go. And finally, for this one, what I did is simply duplicated this one. There we go. For the project colors, what you can do is you can include all of these manually, of course, if you did this design in Adobe XD, but what you can also do is 
use a layout like this. So let me find it. There we go. Position it. And because I don't need this text below, I can select it, hit delete, which is what I did actually for, let me find it for this one, because you can see it right here. So here I can say this. So project colors. So double click project colors. There you go. And I can write this paragraph if I want to. And as for these images, what you can do is let me count two, four, six, eight. So all of these can be like one or two columns wide and you can include those or you can simply drag an image. So image to column, drag it there and not inside this component. So make sure to click outside image to column and you can position it roughly around here. You can hit control G to put it in a group. Here it is right here and can call it colors, for example. Then I can come right here, include a stack, double click inside, control D, 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 whatever, and then make as many of these copies as you want. And you can simply distribute them a bit better. So this is 12, let's say 14 or whatever, let's say 16. There we go. So you can include all of these colors inside. So you get the gist of it and you understand how I went ahead and created all of these. And once again, if this is not clear to you, make sure to check out the Adobe Live session, which I did with Adobe. So it's going to be much more clear. So let me lower this down to 1080. There we go. And one final thing which I want to show you is this. If you want to change and update these colors, which I of course strongly recommend that you do. So here we have H1 color. So if I hit edit right here and go to the red, for example, something like that, hit enter. It's going to update in real time and it's going to show you every single instance of this H1 color that you did. In case you want to change it there, you can. Or in case you want to update it here, for example, in the pop-ins, and you can see it updating right here. So it applied red color to every single instance and every single component that was using this same color. So let me actually go back a step and let me change it right here in the H1 because I want to show you how it can be done in that uh, particular scenario as well. So now when I come right here, hit edit right here, right click and edit. And let's say I want to choose the red color, for example, something really strong. Let's say this one hit enter, it's going to apply it. And you can see the change happening right here in real time. And it's going to also make that change to every single component, which is located right here. So every single component that has that color, it can be added there. Also, you can, if you want to add additional colors, you can go right here to click this plus icon and it's going to add the color from selection. So no matter if there is a graphic inside, if there is an icon, if there is an image or a font or whatever, you can simply click right there and it's going to add it. So you can further tweak this template to make sure to fit whatever you're trying to show in your case study. Same thing goes for character styles. So let me actually go back a step and let me show you how to change the character style like so. So let me actually come right here to show you. So right click, hit edit on this H1 right here. And here we have poppins as I mentioned. So make sure to check it out and to download it in order for everything to work. So let's say play fair display. There we go. When I hit enter, as you can see, it changed and updated in real time, which is the beauty of these components. And in Adobe XD, you can see how it looks like here. You can see how it looks like here and here. So this is a really great method and approach to use when you're creating these case study templates. Just make sure to rename it right here. So just right click rename and type in whatever font uh, name you were using to make sure to understand um, later on when you are customizing this template for any future clients, because this is template is free and you can also go back at any point to download it again. If you forgot about this video, for example, and you are struggling with something, you can simply click right here, hit play right here to open this up as a preview, then click watch this video and there you can download this template all over again and watch this video all over again if you need to. So there we go. I hope you like this template. I hope you're going to use this template and I hope it's going to bring you a lot of jobs in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to check out the description for every single link which I mentioned. If you didn't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I upload every single week all about Adobe XD, UI UX design, passive income techniques and so much more. So if you're interested in content like that, make sure to check it out, make sure to subscribe and until next time, take care.